What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Pikmin. In the last episode, we made quite a bit of progress in the Forest Naval. Unfortunately, we didn't boost our Pikmin numbers as much as I would have liked to, and in this episode, hopefully, we're able to finish the Forest Naval in one more day, and then I think we're going to go back to the Impact Site and boost our Pikmin numbers a little bit and get the last remaining part there. So, without further ado, let's hop into it. This is going to be a relatively tough day. we got a couple boss fights. I guess one big boss, but one sort of mini-boss, we could call it. And I guess something else worth noting is our blue numbers are really low, which is unfortunate because that's a lot of what we're going to need for today. In fact, we're going to take out all of our blues right now. And while those Pikmin are coming out and joining our squad, we're going to pick the blue Pikmin that are here. And hopefully by the end of the day we'll be able to have some time to flower these guys, but maybe we won't, unfortunately. Alright, and then we're also going to pull out ten yellows to kind of get going on a side process while the blues are up to their main task. Alright, so the first thing I'd like to do is um, hopefully flower up some of these blues. You can see we got a lot of leaves. Leaves. I don't know how to say that properly, because it's like Leaf Pikmin. Although, obviously, the plural of um, Leaf is leaves. Am I going to get no nectar? Come on, you got to give me some. No nectar? Alright, well, I guess we'll make do with what we have. <laughs> it's not appreciated, though, game. Come on, a little RNG. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is come over here and we'll take our yellows and we're gonna get them working on the rest of this bridge and we're gonna want them over here later on too because we're gonna need some of those bomb rocks I guess just because we are gonna be using our blues quite a bit let's see if we can get some nectar here come on it should only take a few seconds and could pay off quite a bit in terms of Damage output, and just speed of the Pikmin. A lot of time saved. Okay. I think we're all flowered up, so that's good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first fight some of these Wallywogs. These things are the bane of a lot of people's existences. This is a relatively safe strategy. He says as, you know, a couple Pikmin die. So uh, the, the thing is you have to be careful using the C-Stick. Just kind of throwing the Pikmin on top and then calling them back before he hits the ground helps them avoid the recoil of it hitting the ground. I like to use the C-Stick to try to increase the number of Pikmin I can throw at once. It increases the speed, but unfortunately um, doing so also means that whatever Pikmin I call off of the Wallywog end up trying to attack it on the ground, and that's why we had two deaths there, unfortunately. So. Learn from my mistakes, guys. So we took care of that one. There are a couple more. Um, I think I think we'll fight them, just to not have to risk it. All right. Oh, that was not how I had anticipated. So you'll notice that that time, instead of just kind of going straight up, he moved over, so I wasn't able to call back those Pikmin in time, which meant that they turned into buds. Darn it. I didn't call that one back in time. Wallywogs! Obviously this is a relatively safe strategy for them, but they are still a troublesome enemy, to say the least. And the thing is, these are pale Wallywogs, because they don't get exposed to the sunlight, I think. Um, we'll deal with yellow Wallywogs later on, and those are same type of enemy, just similar amount, to, or just more HP, which is troublesome. So, that was not ideal. Let's regroup real quick. And yeah, it's just, if you're trying to carry back a part and these things start attacking your squad, it's really difficult to get them off your track. You can swarm them when they're on the ground, and there's actually a decent chance that when you do so, they'll, they'll die. And they can even get kind of caught in like a stun lock, where you hit them on the ground, and then they can't even jump up in the first place, which is really nice. 
but it's not guaranteed. And in fact, there's actually a glitch where a lot of the Pikmin could die uh, just kind of randomly when they're doing that. So it's not really something I wanted to risk. And granted, that didn't do perfectly. Still lost a few Pikmin, but that was relatively safe. It did take a bit of time, though. Anyways, we just found the antidioxin filter. This fits over the rocket's exhaust ports and filters out all disease-causing agents from the ship's exhaust. That means I'll be able to move around without polluting the planet's atmosphere. I feel world's better. And the world's better for it, too. So thank you, Olimar, for doing so. Not everybody can say that. Okay. So that should be good there. And then we'll also have um, a few of our Pikmin work on carrying back these Wallywogs. Because, again, we definitely are low on blue Pikmin. These ones, or at least there's a blue 5 pellet here, so I guess we'll do that. And I don't think we'll be able to really do much more in terms of um, using these Pikmin to carry things back. So what we're going to do now is while they're doing that, we're going to take care of our yellow Pikmin that have finished this bridge. And we're going to grab some bombs. And we're going to go fight a boss. Okay, so we only need, we don't need everybody to have bombs. I think we only need like eight or so to do what I'm hoping to at least. Let's check the map to make sure we're going the right direction. Okay, they're, they're progressing just fine. And again, it'll be nice to boost our yellow, not yellow, um, blue numbers a little bit with those Wallywog corpses and that pellet. We'll take care of these guys later on. Because we've got a wall to get rid of. So, we want to be really careful with the fire here. That was poorly timed, but we're okay, I guess. Okay, I accidentally used one extra. Come on back, guys. The, the danger there is that you accidentally throw one of your yellow Pikmin and then have them run back in the fire, just like that. <laughs> and luckily, we're okay in the end, but um, it could have been bad. All right, we're gonna throw our bombs here just so I don't risk them blowing up the rest of my Pikmin. And now we're, we've got a really small squad here, but take a look at this. Look at this thing. So it's got these four really long legs. And that, and they're just stomping around all over the place. And that is why I have a very small army. If you have a big army in this fight, it's so easy for a bunch of them to get stomped that you'll end up losing a lot of Pikmin. And honestly, um, you won't even get a whole bunch of damage off with that increased uh, number of Pikmin. So, the anti-dioxin filter. Laws of deep space require all ships to eliminate all pollutants. It's appreciated. Alright, so now we've recovered 13 parts. Only need 16 more. But, um, yeah. So, obviously, the, the weak point of this monster, this enemy... Oh, come on guys, get away from the feet. Is this little central area. And, oh, really? Oh, okay. So you gotta be really careful. What? No! Come on. <laughs> so we've already lost quite a few Pikmin, unfortunately. Because they like to go towards their feet. When they, like, just kind of wake up like that, you'll see. They get shaked off. Sh it'll shake them off of the central part. And then they'll immediately just wake up and go towards the feet. And of course, that's like a death sentence against this enemy. Um, come on. So you gotta be really careful. You gotta aim. You can use red Pikmin, which, as I've noted before, they do extra damage. Which is always um, helpful. But at the same time, they don't reach as high up as the yellow Pikmin do. So you can have some struggles as a result. And just like that, we've, we've still lost a good chunk of our army here. And, yeah, we lost four Pikmin. And we have this part, though, now. The guard satellite. Deep space is filled with dangers. This automated satellite does its part to help guard both me and my spaceship. I'll sleep better at night once this little satellite is back on duty. So, part of something else I like to note is that the beady long legs, this monster, it has this central ball. When you beat it, it opens up like a party ball. I don't know if many people are familiar with them. Um, but it's something that I remember specifically from Smash Bros. Melee as an item they introduced in that game. Alright, so now we're pretty much... Um, I mean, we've got some work to do with the Red Pikmin, because they're going to be able to carry back a lot of those parts, and then we have that mini-boss I mentioned earlier. But for the most part, we've done a pretty good job of taking care of some of the bigger 
aspects. We're not going to need our blue Pikmin right now, so we'll deposit a lot of these guys. And what we might try to do, actually, is get the reds to carry back a bunch of stuff to the base, and then once they do, call them off of it so that we can get the blues to boost their numbers a bit. All right, so let's get some more reds. How many am I gonna want? Maybe, maybe like 60? Honestly, yeah, that's probably fine. All right, so we've got 70 reds, a fair number of leaf reds, which is not ideal, but we can make it work. You'll notice over in the distance there is another Wallywog we're going to have to deal with. So we'll take care of that sooner than later. Um, we're also going to have some grubs and shearwigs to deal with, but again, I want to deal with the Wallywog first just because, not even though they don't always cause problems, they certainly can, and I'd rather not deal with it. We have a decent number of time, or a decent amount of time left, so I think we'll be able to accomplish all of the main things we want to today. All right, so we had to move a little bit there because I wasn't really 100% on top of my game. And you'll notice how much more damage the reds are doing, right? So this should probably be the last cycle for it. Yeah, okay. Now, off in the distance, we have to deal with this. Actually, I'm gonna deal with a bunch of the, the grubs and shearwigs and whatever. Come on, come on. Come on. So we lost a couple Pikmin there, unfortunately. So that was not my cleanest fight. <laughs> little, little embarrassed that we lost so many Pikmin, uh, a couple Pikmin to, you know, these things. My aim was definitely off, but nevertheless, we have a job to accomplish. So this is called a puff stool. And so you attack it a bunch on the ground and then it, uh, it trips, and then you can just toss a ton of Pikmin up so that it can attack it where it's actually weak. If you don't do that in time, it'll actually stand back up, and then it'll kind of like brainwash your Pikmin. It's, uh, it's pretty tragic, honestly. <laughs> so I recommend trying to do that as quickly as you can. And again, a good tip is to use the C-Stick to bring Pikmin closer to Olimar, so you can kind of really mash A, which you guys can honestly probably hear on the mic. Um, and and fire those Pikmin rapid fire. Anyways, we found the Omega Stabilizer. I absolutely must have this piece if my batter chip is ever to fly straight again. It has steered me through countless deep space storms. That, and it looks rather cool. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Um, we're gonna, come on guys. Top priority is the ship part. So then they can work on this. <clears throat> okay. Did I hear slacker? All right, well, can they really not help out? Okay, so we don't have a ton of time, but we do have some. I'll give this to you, I guess, for the time being to carry back. And we still have the guard satellite to bring back, so I'm actually going to go withdraw some more red Pikmin and pick the ones that we already have, and pick a bunch of the Pikmin we have at the base. Because again, they're kind of taking up a lot of the, the space in our active army. But these are flowers anyway, so that's good. Let's see how many we actually have after we pick all of these. Because I think we'll need like 20 something for the guard satellite. So we have 11, or no, 10, okay. Well, I'm going to pick these blues so we have more space in our army. And then deposit them. Withdraw some reds and then run out there and hopefully, I mean, our top priority is obviously the guard satellite. If we can't um, get some of the, you know, corpses or pellets, that's okay because we're going to be going back to the impact site and that's like easily the best place to, to improve your Pikmin numbers. So it's not the end of the world. And these guys are going to be back in just a second, so I'm going to wait for them so that I can take them back. All right, perfect. You'll notice it's like one of the bases of the ship there. It looks it actually looks like apple slices to me, but... The Omega Stabilizer. This is the dolphin's fin. 
It is a little beaten up, but it should still function. I've made great strides in repairing the dolphin. With this, I should be able to fly again, even if I don't recover all 30 parts. Which is excellent news. Okay. And so with that, we only have one more piece left here. One more part. I'm actually going to call them because I don't want them to... Well, let's see if we can flower up real quick. Really quickly, though. Guys, I said really quickly. <laughs> no nectar? Oh my goodness, twice! Twice in this episode that's happened. Come on. You guys have corpses to carry. Come on. Corpses and pellets to carry. And a part, for that matter. Alright, so top priority is the guard satellite, but... Obviously, take everything else that you can back. And I think we'll we'll get a couple, I mean, we can get a couple flowers on that. And maybe this, too. We'll see what we can do. I'm not confident these guys will all make it back in time. We'll see. We will see. Oh no, they're totally not gonna make it back in time. Let's check the radar at least. So those guys are moving along. Um, we got the third part, which at the end of the day is the most important part. But, but still. This is protecting me from space pirates many, many times. I've now recovered 15 out of 30 parts. Oh man. They're totally not gonna make it back in time. Alright, alright. So that's a bummer. Um, I wish that I had... Ah. <sighs> I didn't get to use the puff stool's body to sprout Pikmin because I expected uh, that I'd have a little bit of time to come back with these corpses and use the blue Pikmin to add them to their onion. So learn from my mistakes, guys. <laughs> I think we maybe spend a little bit too much time with the Wallywogs. What you can do is you can try to send your Pikmin to carry back the parts and stuff, and then while they're doing that, you can use Olimar to actually distract. We didn't leave any Pikmin behind. No, we left a Pikmin behind? No! Where? It must have been one that fell somewhere. Oh, that's really frustrating. Okay, well, that was a very imperfect final day. <laughs> we lost a few Pikmin to Wallywogs, we lost a few Pikmin to BD Longlegs, and we left one behind, and we weren't able to utilize a lot of the corpses that we got. And we weren't able to flower up our Pikmin despite pulling up two grass patches. Which uh, had, like, no nectar. So, it was not, not that great. And we really need to boost our numbers. However, that's part of what the impact site is for. Anyway, six days since impact. The Pikmin that I did not bring back to the Onion all vanished overnight. It may well be that they have fallen prey to the planet's nocturnal creatures. An ugly thought. Perhaps that is why they follow me in the atmosphere. I'm starting to grasp the cycles of life on this planet. So we left behind one. Yeah, it must have been one straggler somewhere. And, like I said, we didn't even boost our numbers that much. We don't really need too many more red Pikmin, I'll probably want to get some, but our real focus is going to be blue Pikmin, because what happens is, um, after this place, we're going to be heading to the Distant Spring soon, and you really need blue Pikmin there. But regardless, look at that, we have all the parts from the Forest Naval, so that's, that's always good. Now it is day seven, and I'm going to... We can boost our numbers in the Forest of Hope, but we're still going to have a busy day when we get there, because we have three parts to collect, so... I'd rather go to the impact site, and at least for the time being, what we're going to end up doing is collecting a lot of Pikmin, growing a lot of Pikmin. You'll see there are a lot of pellets around, and then there's actually one more part that we can get. So the first thing I'd like to do is take out a whole bunch of blue Pikmin, because they are going to be, first of all, the, the primary Pikmin type we're trying to boost. 
and then secondarily, they're going to be really helpful for one of the parts of the impacts that you guys probably haven't seen yet. I mean, unless you've played the game before, obviously. Um, we'll take out 25? Yeah, 25 yellows. Alright. So, let's get going. So here is what's called an iridescent flint beetle. I'm pretty sure I've shown we've run into this before. And luckily we got a we got a pellet and some nectar we can take advantage of. Come on. Come on, land on it. Did I really not hit it with so many of those? Okay, well there's more nectar. Well, now that we've sufficiently wasted time doing that, <laughs> um, let's let's grab our blue Pikmin here and roll on out. Who was more distracted? Oh, they they picked up some bomb rocks. That's actually quite convenient. Do we have everyone? You can grab a couple more bomb rocks. Okay. Come on. So, something for those of you who have played this game before might realize is this area right here is empty, which is not always the case. Um, after day, after today actually, after day seven, it's very much not. What, only one of them? There are actually some secret bosses here that we'll get to, or I'll show off later on in the playthrough. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is actually utilize these bomb rocks to take these things out. These are called, I think they're like clammy clam clams or something like that. <laughs> and I absolutely despise dealing with them. So, there we go. Um, we're, we're done with that for now. And we don't need this bomb rock, so we're just going to take that back. And now we'll have our yellows take back some of this, which is really nice. One thing that's really cool is that in the impact site, there's a 20 pellet for every single color of Pikmin, which goes a long way in terms of boosting numbers if you get that same color bonus. Okay, so we're going to need to deal with all of that in a second, but what I'd like to do in the meantime is actually have quite a few of our Pikmin working on this door, and then, well, maybe, maybe a few less. We can have... 20 of our guys working on bringing this out of the water. And then while they're doing that, we're gonna deal with this. So, these things are notoriously painful because you have to send your Pikmin into, you know. Oh, they're just gonna say 100. Um, you have to send your Pikmin into the clam in order to have it fight whatever it's holding, whether it's a pearl or a part, and then they immediately close, and so you have to call them all back, etc. And it's just that anything caught inside dies. So I should... What? Did you see that? How many did I lose there? Four? No. Okay, not quite. Alright, you know what? I'm just gonna... We, we've gotta... we got to boost our damage output. Alright, come on back, guys. Alright, so I definitely had a little more time to work with there. And they finished that door, which is nice. So, interesting. No, come on, guys. Oh, did you guys see how close that was? <laughs> that was so scary. Um, something that's worth noting is that even after you get something out of those clams, they will still, I guess, um, they'll still take. They'll still close on your Pikmin, so you have to call them back after the part is removed. And I remember the first time we played this game, that totally caught me off guard. Anyways, we have found the Positron Generator. By combining batteries with solar cells, this machine can generate incredible amounts of electricity. What a timely find. Those instant space noodles will taste better heated up. Yes, they will. Alright, so we'll send 20 of our guys there. Um, I need to send, I think, four? Come on. I believe in you guys. Okay, well, I'll, I want to take a few more. Is that enough? That is. Okay. And then in the meantime, we're going to work on this. This one is a little bit more difficult to work with because of the slope that Olimar has to stand on. Come on, come, come on. Ah, I called him back. I called him back. 
Get out of there! Okay, I guess I need to adjust my angle. And then awkwardly throw them as Alomar slides down the hill. So you might be wondering, why am I even doing this in the first place, right? Um, why am I spending so much time trying to get these pearls out of the clams? Well, each pearl is actually worth 50 Pikmin. So you can make some really big jumps in Pikmin numbers using them. In addition to all the pellets we'll find around here. Anyways, this electric generator is so powerful that if you approach it carelessly, you'll get an electric shock. <laughs> As if it's static. So now we found 16 parts, and we have found all of the parts of the impact site, which is awesome. So now we're just focusing on building Pikmin numbers. And we are almost done with this pearl. Alright, come on guys, come on. Okay, so we're gonna have... Actually, I should very strategically send three there, and then three there. Because again, we really need those blue Pikmin numbers for the upcoming places we're gonna have to go. And with that, we've already accomplished one of the more difficult aspects of the impact site. And, I mean, we did... We definitely didn't do it perfectly. We lost a sizable number of Pikmin. But it's okay-ish. We have a whole bunch of pellet posies to work on. And now, while they're doing that, and then consequently climbing up there, you'll notice there are some big pellets up there. We're gonna have our blue Pikmin work on making a geyser. Nope. Those are... Those are for the blue Pikmin, or for the red Pikmin. Now that we have a geyser up here, we can get up here, which is really nice. Um, how many Pikmin am I gonna have up here? Okay, so we can start to take back some of these other pellets. Obviously, um, we're gonna be good on the blue front for a while. Really? Am I missing one? Actually, um, I see. Okay, well, you guys can go over there for now, and I'll send the rest of these guys up this way, and they can carry back the rest. And then our other colors of Pikmin will go around and take them back to their respective onions. I should have been a bit more strategic about my, my Pikmin throwing there. Alright. Oh wait, no, they already took it to the blue one. Darn it, that's not what I wanted to happen. But, in the end, it's gonna be okay. Because I think we're doing alright in terms of blue numbers now. Because of those pearls. Although, oddly enough, I didn't really see the, um, the numbers seem that high, I guess, in here. We can do that for the time being, and then... Come on, guys. Into the onion you go. There you go. Alright. We'll take out some of the reds. You don't need too many of them. Just some. What is that, like, humming sound? You guys hear that? Okay... So, we'll build up our red numbers a little bit more. For the most part, I think we're pretty good. Um, we, we have a hundred yellows or so, so we don't really need a whole lot more on that front. There's another iridescent flint beetle. Let's see if we can uh, get a few more pellets from it. Alright. 
No, 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 no. The reds. There we go. Okay. Enough fighting the, uh, the flint beetle. So the blues are sprouting just fine over there. We'll want to make sure we can flower up as many people as, as we can. I think that's pretty solid in terms of red numbers now. That yellow can, uh... Actually, no, we'll... And I think with that, we've covered really most of the... the pellets in the area. I don't think there's much... We've definitely... We're definitely good on the red front now. Like, look at all those pellets. So we'll send those back. And then I honestly think we're still gonna take out some blues. To take care of these last pellet posies over here. And pretty soon we're also gonna need to start plucking. So I think that's actually what we'll do now. Is we'll just start plucking a bunch of this stuff. Because that'll at least give us time to flower up a little bit. And we have a lot of blues to flower. Or to pluck, rather. But it looks like most of them have flowered, which is good. I always like to try to make sure I have at least a hundred flowers of every Pikmin type. Because I don't think you'll ever really need much more than that at any given time. What are those Pikmin doing there? There we go. I was going to say, come on, take back the, uh, the pellet. This is one of those times I wish I had Louie. I've been playing a lot of Pikmin 2 lately. And it's really nice having, you know, a couple commanders you can work with at any given time. Okay, it's getting kind of late, so we're gonna have to... Now is the time to flower up. Oh, and there are actually a whole bunch of yellows to, to pluck, so... Maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Caring more about getting these pellets than actually flowering up the Pikmin I have, which honestly would probably go a lot farther. Okay. Got a sufficient army. Go ahead and nectar up, guys. We've got some nectar over here, I believe. Where are my final final four? Are they reds over there? Are they lost Pikmin in the abyss? So now that we've flowered up those Pikmin at least, I think what I'm going to do is try to take back uh, some of my Pikmin. Got a couple hundred. Do we have any lost Pikmin? We do have one lost soul out there. Probably from the incident with the iridescent flint beetle. We still have some nectar out here. Sure. Go ahead and take this back. Entertain me. So we flowered up a decent number of our Pikmin. We boosted our numbers. A fair amount. I wonder if we'll have enough time to pluck these. Probably not. But we'll see. I'll try to make it work. Come on, come on. At least one of them. Nope. 
<laughs> That's all right. So we got some good numbers. Again, we only had like 70, if that, blue Pikmin before today. And I think we had like 110 yellows and a little over 100, maybe like 130, 140 reds. So I think with our numbers, I mean, I at least want to have 100 blue flowers and we don't really need much more than honestly like 60, 70 yellows, if that, after this. So yeah, and then reds, I mean, are the workhorse in terms of damage and, and battling. So I like to have a lot more reds than anything else. But it'll matter a lot more when we get to the Distant Springs. And granted, we're going to be going to the Forest of Hope before then. We'll have a chance to potentially, you know, boost numbers a bit more. Anyway, seven days since impact. There are now only 14 parts that I still need to retrieve. Will I be able to recover the remaining parts in 23 more days? Surely there are some parts that are not absolutely necessary. If my ship is not complete by day 30, the only way I will find out is to try to lift off. I just recalled the day I took my son for a ride in the spaceship. He was so happy. I shall tell him of this journey when I return. And I shall return. I must. I can already see the look of wonder on his precious face as I describe my adventures with the Pikmin. Aw, I... This journal entry in particular really gets to me. You know, we get to see a more emotional side of Olimar who's dealing with the stresses of... And the... the de I guess, like, the depressing aspect of will I ever return to see the people I care most about saying goodbye to or enjoying life with, right? And obviously this game is, you know, much more lighthearted than... <laughs> um... Than anything else but uh it's it does have a little bit of a darker aspect look at that blue pikmin jump wow okay so we have 209 blue pikmin so we're set there we have 138 yeah so i think we're really good with our blue pikmin numbers and our red pikmin numbers i think if anything i mean when we go to the forest of hope those will be the two pikmin populations i try to boost the most anyways but yeah i feel really comfortable with this unfortunately we lost a handful of pikmin uh, not not too proud of that because I think it was all preventable or it was like wait what happened type of deaths but again we've now completed the impact site I will come back to this place in a bonus episode to show off two of the secret bosses uh, or secret enemies I guess you can run into on the impact site later on and we've completed the forest naval so next up is going to be hopefully finishing the forest of hope in just one more day and then moving on to the distant spring the final well the penultimate area of the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope you guys are looking forward to the next episode. But until that episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.